Hey there everybody, this video will cover a quick review for every truck from the DLC packs outside of the season passes for SnowRunner. Each pack will be labelled and I will note whether or not the pack is worth buying. I will be working through the packs in release order with labelled chapters so you can easily navigate around so whether you are a newbie player or a veteran trucker, sit back, relax and enjoy. The Navistar 5000 MV, which was the pre-order bonus truck, is an absolute unit, and thanks to Angry Ginger Life for the footage, as I don't actually have access to this truck. A 340 litre fuel tank may not actually last that long, given that this truck is pretty damn thirsty, despite all-wheel drive being always on. The Navistar is also a very quick truck, despite its bulk, but unfortunately and unusually, this heavy class truck lacks diff lock. This is where more weaknesses crop up. No mud tires and the lack of diff lock really do hinder this truck in deep mud, whereas shallow mud and dirt conditions should be okay. Although it is available from the start of the game, if you actually have this truck, its usability does decline as you progress through the game, as more and more viable trucks become available. A minor issue too is the exhaust placement. They cannot be moved, so the third person view is often occluded, ruining the driving experience. Up next is the Khan 39 Marshall from the High Roller Pack, or if you purchase the Year 1 Pass. The Khan Marshall is a plucky little scout, which is a great early game assistant for exploring and hitting those watchtowers, especially given that it has all wheel driving diff lock always on, combined with massive ground clearance and chunky tyres that are better than most in the mud. The truck has good speed but a rather small fuel tank at just 40 litres and the engine can be fairly consumption heavy sometimes getting up to nearly 6 litres per minute which for a small vehicle is a hell of a lot. Fortunately there is a roof rack available with spare fuel and repair points to keep you running in the wilderness. On the flip side the truck is a little top heavy so rolling over can be a problem but if you have the autonomous winch you should be able to get yourself out of more situations. The truck does have a tow bar but annoyingly it cannot tow a trailer which is a huge shame because with the ground clearance it would theoretically do a good job. Would I buy this if I was starting out fresh with no other DLC? Absolutely. Onto the Chevrolet Apache from the Classico pack. This six wheel drive beast to me looks fairly odd. I don't know what it is, it just doesn't sit right. However, it is powerful and it can carry a lot of spare parts, spare fuel and spare tires rocking that mobile repair garage in a similar vein to the Ford F750 and the Resvani Hercules. Diff lock is always on but the all wheel drive is on a toggle so that will cost you more fuel to use. Large diameter but narrow tires keep the Apache out of the mud in a similar manner to the Zix 605R and this truck does a decent job at getting through water and mud. A 95 litre fuel tank is nice and healthy and great for exploration and assisting trucks in the field. In the same light as the Resvani Hercules, there is no tow bar for this vehicle, a missed opportunity to improve its utility as it would be great for towing the Scout fuel trailer for an extra 900 litres of fuel, though you can often just find them out in the world. Would I buy this truck if starting out fresh? I would, as you will get a lot of use out of this truck throughout the entire game. Next is the Western Star 49X which released alongside Phase 2 in the 49X pack and I'll admit that I jumped straight onto this truck when it was released and I was a little disappointed. No mud tyres and the mission to haul the Cat 770G was tough with this truck. I have since learned from my mistakes and I'm more aware of when to use a truck like this. It is a great looking truck but it has all wheel drive and diff lock on a toggle which will perform okay until you hit deep mud. Capable of running a multitude of add-ons from trailer hauler to log carrier, you can use this truck to fill any gap in your arsenal. Fuel tank is a decent size 290 litres, though with all-wheel driving gauge you'll have to keep an eye on your fuel gauge. A sour point on this truck is the lift axle the truck has, and I really wish that the tyres on the axle match the tyres you actually equip to the truck, because why else would you run two different sets of tyres? Would I buy this truck again? Uh, honestly, no. Onto the GMC Brigadier 8000 from the content pack of the same name and this truck falls into an unfortunate category that exists in SnowRunner. This is a group of heavy duty and off-road US trucks that are essentially identical in abilities and only differ in their appearance. As is the way in SnowRunner, this US truck has no mud tire options so will run the UOD2 tires like nearly every other US truck. Yes, it can run the majority of add-ons, but so can the base game trucks. All-wheel drive and diff lock are on a toggle, and the fuel tank is sub 300 litres, so what makes this truck stand out against so many trucks of the same type? 
I mean, yes, it can run a flatbed and the magnetic detector module together, but that's it. Its power is decent and it holds trailers well, but it doesn't really stand out. Would I buy this truck if I was starting again? No. With the announcement of the year two content, the anniversary DLC firstly brought the Caterpillar CT681. This truck is near enough a carbon copy of the base game Cat CT680 in its abilities and its downsides plus more. All wheel drive and diff locker on a toggle for this heavy duty truck, but without any form of suspension lift kit, but the addition of a lift axle, this truck is hindered in the mud even more than normal. You can still use a variety of add-ons and the fuel consumption rates are fairly decent. It just suits tasks that are a bit more niche, i.e. avoiding deep mud where appropriate. The truck has the same speed and power as the regular CT680, but I will always use the regular CT680 over this one. Avoid high saddle contracts with this truck unless you love the life of pain and you will probably be getting the most out of this truck in Alaska and phase 8. On the upside, this truck and the next one are both free to obtain and free stuff is always nice and once in game you can always just sell it if you don't like it. Next is the International HX 520 from the Anniversary DLC and this truck is in the same category of trucks as the Brigadier from a few minutes ago which is why I'm using the ramp towing platform. UOD2 tires, less than 300 litres of fuel in the tank, and all-wheel drive and diff lock are on a toggle. Does that sound familiar? It's practically a cut and paste job again with the only difference is the truck's aesthetics. On this truck, the wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and rear axles, is huge, which increases the turning circle to the next level. There are trucks that definitely overlap with this truck, so if you want a lot of redundancy in your fleet, then that's great. Just make sure you avoid deep mud. I won't lie that this truck is decent to drive, but nothing really jumps out about it. It is part of the Anniversary DLC, which is free, so yes, you shouldn't shun free stuff. So if you aren't keen on it, then just sell it. If this truck was part of a DLC that you had to buy, then I would not buy it. The Tatra T805 from the Tatra Dual Pack is a teeny tiny truck in the same vein as the Acteon. I mean, look how big the trailer is compared to this truck. So yeah, I recommend against towing trailers with this truck. It does however come with a custom van body add-on and a small tanker add-on as this truck is intended absolutely to be a support vehicle. It has an excellent 190 litre fuel tank and even when the all-wheel drive is engaged the fuel consumption rate is fine so you'll be driving for a long time indeed. The diff lock is on a toggle which is a shame but this truck does a good job of getting around the map on its own. I have to admit though that I haven't really used this truck at all. This is mostly down to the fact that I almost exclusively play hard mode with my rule set of not buying any extra trucks. Would I ordinarily use this truck? Probably not as there are much bigger trucks that can function in the support role. Next is the Tatra T813 from the Tatra Dual Pack and this is the truck that you buy the Tatra Pack for. Coming out alongside the release of Phase 5, the T813 has been an awesome ally for me when not playing hard mode. I've used it in many situations just for its brute force alone. A little unorthodox in that the all-wheel drive and diff lock are both on a toggle, which is odd for such a big truck, though it isn't super fast in the first place, so not being able to utilize the high gear and diff lock always on is no biggie. A mega 380 litre fuel tank plus 160 spare litres of fuel on the roof enables you to be trundling around pretty much forever. I tested this truck for heavy trailer towing and this is one of the best, only really outdone by the Zix 605R and the two Colob trucks. Downsides for this truck is that the add-ons are very limited to just the high saddle, sideboard bed and a ramp towing platform. It's a great early addition and assistant later on, but maybe falls behind a bit as you progress more through the game. So this truck and the previous make up the Tatra Dual Pack and would I buy it fresh? Yes, I would. They bring more variety and ability, especially the T813 with its roof snorkel and big chunky tires. It's a bit like an Azov 6, but with fewer add-ons. The next pack features the Jeep Renegade from the Jeep Dual Pack, a small 4x4 scout truck with all-wheel drive and diff lock on a toggle, mediocre mud tires, but a decent sized fuel tank. I mean, what else do you say? Not a terrible truck in all honesty, but this and the Wrangler are definitely fan service trucks and I don't think they really fit into the SnowRunner cinematic universe given their small stature because in order to do well in SnowRunner, being oversized is king. A small roof rack will help keep itself going to assist with early map exploration, hitting those watchtowers and collecting upgrades. 
If there wasn't a roof rack, I wouldn't use this at all as the fuel consumption isn't great. There isn't much more to say, which is a shame. The superior Wrangler from the Jeep Dual Pack has more power and a more economical engine, providing greater exploration potential, though it does have similar pitfalls to the Renegade, given its low ground clearance, even with the loftiest suspension upgrades. Avoid trailers, as small scouts don't tow trailers very well, as we all know. To sum up, the Jeep Dual Pack is definitely for fan service, and it's nice if you're wanting to collect all the trucks, but they really don't add anything to the game. You're just paying for the brands. I'd be more inclined to use these vehicles if their unique tires were actually more capable than the stock MS mud tires. I'm not asking for huge overpowered boosts, but enough to make a difference, or else I might as well just use the Chevy CK1500, which I don't have to pay £5 for. Don't buy this pack if you think these trucks will improve your garage. Up now is the Step 3364 Crocodile from the Crocodile Pack. This is a truck almost stuck between being a big scout and a small off-roader. It's bigger than the Tazaktion, but with similar capabilities. This truck comes with a unique sideboard bed and van body add-on. The sideboard bed, despite its size, is actually just a single slot, so it's not hugely practical. So it makes this truck a bit more suited to repairs in the field for those truck recovery missions. All-wheel drive and diff lock are always on, which is always a win, coupled with those balloon tires for optimal performance in most conditions. Expect around 15 minutes solid driving time, though the fuel consumption is variable, peaking fairly high for a truck with a 150 litre fuel tank. Despite the small stature, there are a variety of basic add-ons you can use for this truck, including the aforementioned sideboard and van body, fuel tanker, high and low saddle, and a roof rack. On a side note, though not major, the sideboard bed does actually include 60 more litres of spare fuel, which is not bad. Though you can use a high saddle, I wouldn't recommend it at all. The Tuz Acteon is a superior cousin to this truck for reference, so would I buy this again? For its practical uses, not really. There are vehicles part of the season pass that do a better job than this. On to the Land Rover Defender 90 from the Land Rover Dual Pack, and this will feel like deja vu. A very familiar off-roader, especially if you're British, unique paint schemes, all-wheel drive and diff lock on a toggle, and having to use the stock MS mud tires leave you a bit underwhelmed. The Defender 90 can tow a trailer, but I wouldn't, given the classic tropes of small scout trucks being unable to tow trailers through mud without having to winch everywhere. An 80 litre fuel tank is not bad as the fuel consumption doesn't get very high at all. You do get a decent roof rack add-on supplying a further 100 litres of fuel plus some repair parts. The second part of the Land Rover pack is the Defender 110, which is the larger Defender mostly seen on farms in Britain. You get the same roof rack pretty much as the Defender 90, the same fuel tank, same all-wheel drive system, same diff lock toggle. You will need to use the stock MS mud tyres again and the ground clearance means it'll be difficult to not get stuck in mud. Like with the Jeep Dual Pack, these vehicles are providing fan service rather than actually being practical in SnowRunner, where bigger is objectively better. Yes, they are cool, but you really can't take them through mud without always needing a winch, which for me is just no fun. So I would have to take my chances cutting through the forests. Would I buy this pack again? It's the same answer as the Jeep Pack. For collecting trucks, sure, go for it. But for practical use, don't bother. Now onto the Western Star 47X NF1424 from the Western Star Wolfpack. The first truck from this triple truck pack has a mouthful of a name. I give all three trucks a thorough test in the live stream linked in the top right. This is the 47X that doesn't have five axles and actually makes for a solid trailer hauler. All wheel drive and diff lock are on a toggle, but this isn't much of an issue because this truck has a lot of power under the bonnet. As standard with most US trucks, UOD2 tires are the go too. The fuel tank can be a bit limiting, but there is a roof rack for assisting longevity. I do enjoy using this truck. It does feel like a good truck, which is what you want when you pay directly for a truck pack. Other add-ons are limited on this truck, as it is fairly small, so you won't be taking logging contracts with this, for example. Just watch out for deep mud, given the tyre options. How many wheels do you want? If your answer is yes, then you want the Western Star 47X NF1430, from the Western Star Wolfpack. You get five axles on this truck and two of them are lift axles, which isn't ideal really. No diff lock and all wheel drive is on a toggle and I know what you're thinking, it just sounds useless, right? Well, actually no. OHD two tires and all wheel drive are kind of a weird magical combo that just works. In the Wolfpack testing livestream, I enjoyed this truck the most by far. 
It can run a range of add-ons covering saddles, logging, flatbed, tanker, fan body, seismic vibrator, and crane. Only add-on missing really is a roof rack. It has a 290 litre fuel tank and okay fuel consumption as it will change often so only use the all-wheel drive when necessary. As is the way with the Western Star Trucks, they have power coming every which way so there's no problem on that front. On to the last of the Wolfpack trucks, the runt of the litter, the Western Star 57X is a highway truck in a game where there are very few roads at all. This is a truck for touring continents given the accommodation module on the back of the cabin. I mean, it's got a great paint job and exhaust setup, but it runs so close to the ground. You can increase the ground clearance marginally by changing the bodywork options, but this isn't enough. Definitely a truck for Alaska and the roads of Phase 8. It only has all-wheel drive and that is on a toggle and add-ons are also limited to just the two saddles, a loading crane and the log carrier front. And I would definitely never take this log in as logging camps are always muddy so this truck will just get stuck immediately. You cannot use the saddle and the loading crane together so the crane has no real use and I wouldn't use the high saddle either given how low the truck rides. Now this truck pack features three trucks for the same cost as the two truck pack. So are the two truck packs overpriced or are the three trucks here underpriced? Well, I'm going to go with the latter as the 57X is fairly useless, really. The two remaining 47X variants have their uses. So would I buy this truck again? Uh, yes, I would. Lastly, after 78 trucks, we reach the 79th, the Resvani Hercules from the content pack of the same name. This released alongside Phase 8 and it is probably one of the most unique looking trucks I've ever seen given its futuristic vibes and god awful interior. A 6x6 layout with all wheel drive on a toggle gives you the ability to smash off road terrain. In the same manner as the Apache and the F750 you can load up the Hercules with loads of spare fuel, repair points and spare tyres for that mobile repair garage vibe. The stock Hercules tyres are ok but the MS1 tyres are slightly better as always. An 80 litre fuel tank is okay, though the fuel consumption can vary to up to nearly 7 litres per minute, but your speed will often determine your fuel consumption. No damn tow bar, damn it! There are a lot of visual changes you can make to this truck, and I implore you to ignore them all completely. If you do equip, then you'll be taking damage like there's no tomorrow. I'm not sure what the cosmetics do to the hitboxes of the wheels, suspension, and the engine, but the fenders, thresholds, wheel arches are devastating to the truck's durability. Run the bodywork as default and you'll be fine. Would I buy this again? Yes, I would. It has a lot of use for exploration and vehicular support, so yes. So that wraps up all of the DLC content released so far. No doubt there will be more in the future, so I'll cover them as and when they are released. And if you missed any other part of this mini-series, there is a link on screen to the full playlist. Finally, I want to thank you very much for watching and have a great day.